I still don't know. Oh, you got to do it. So, I think it's because I'm a major. No, the form. <laughs> First, um, uh, training paradigms, or the way that I explain paradigms, I've, I've used the same story for over a year now, and I use it because it's the best example I can think of. When you guys came into town, you know, I gave some of you a map, you know, of how to get here. If you would have come here and I sent you guys a map of Columbus, okay? I'm sorry, I gave you guys a map titled Columbus, but it was really a map of Detroit. And I said, meet me at the Hawthorne Suites. You'd come into town, you'd have your map, you'd be prepared, you'd start driving all over the place trying to find the Hawthorne Suites. Okay, you wouldn't find it. So you're probably gonna pull over here and gonna say, the hell? Now you're gonna look at it and you're gonna read it again. And you're gonna, okay, then you're gonna start looking for the roads. Now we're all guys in here, you know we're not gonna ask. Okay, so we're just going to keep reading the thing. Then you're going to say, you know, this Dave's nuts. You know, this doesn't look right. I'm going to call him up. Now, keep this in mind when you're thinking about um, athletes, coaches, um, training partners, everything, because the story relates to all of it. Okay, so you're going to call me up, and I'm going to say, you know, Bruce, why read the map? You know, you're not, you're not looking at it good enough. You know, you're not seeing the road. Find one road and go from there. So you can say, all right, you know. He's going to go back. He's going to look at it. He's not going to find a road. Now I just, you know, I just put him in his place. I didn't call him an idiot. I just said, look a little harder. So he's going to be less inclined to want to try to change and call me again. All right, so next time he's going to go in and might go buy a book. He's going to buy a book on map reading. Okay, maybe he doesn't know how to read the map. So he spends the time reading the book, he goes out and he gets lost again. Okay, so he calls me again. Now I'm going to say, what's your problem? You know, get out there and just go. It's not that hard. You look at the map and you go to the Hawthorne Suites, we'll be there at 9 o'clock. So, okay, so he goes out and he gets lost again. So now maybe he feels he's just not motivated enough. You know, I'm telling him, look, you know, you get your head out of your ass, get out there and do it right. You know, you have no motivation, your head's not right. Okay? So, okay, fine. So he goes out there, he's even more motivated, bam, he's lost again. Now, the moral of the story, the guy's got the wrong map. Okay, and this is what goes on time and time and time and time again when it comes to training. Okay, people are on a certain training program. Let's say the Western method of periodization, which we're going to go over. And they go out there and bam, nothing. All right, so they're, oh, man, what's going on? So they ask their training partner. Their training partner says, oh, man, you know, whatever, you had a bad day, you're, you're sick, whatever. We'll, we'll get to do better next time. Goes the next week, bam, same thing. Runs right into the wall again. It's like, damn, you know. I, so he goes and gets a book. And he reads the book on the same style of training that they're doing. Okay, only to confirm what they're already doing. So, bam, same thing again. Now, how many times are you going to run into that wall until you find a different map? Okay. And that's what we're going to try to present. And that's what I am going to present is that other map, that other style of training. Because if, you know, one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. Okay, I was guilty of it. I spent about four years at the same level doing the same thing over and over again. I changed some things. Instead of three sets, I might have done four. Okay, but I still used the same basic scheme and was afraid to change the scheme because I figured if I changed the scheme, I would get a lot weaker. Tell you what, if you're staying at the same place and you're not progressing up, you're getting weaker. Because there's only one way to go in the sport, and that's up. If you're not going up, you're going down. Okay, it's just a matter of time. Watch how many people progress at the same total. Watch how long they stay in the sport for one thing. And after three years, watch it start to go down. Another analogy that I like to you to explain this is, you know, in the summertime, if you ever watch a fly, you know, buzzing around your room, you try to catch it, you can't catch it, whatever. Fly smashes into a window. The fly knows where it wants to go. Okay, it wants to go outside. But the damn fly is too stupid to realize it can't go through the window. Now sit there and watch that fly sometime. Watch how long it will spend banging against the window. It will bang against the window until it dies. So the moral of that story is, I hope you guys are smarter than a fly. 
okay? Some things that we're going to do as well, a couple activities before I continue on just to kind of drive this home. Everybody cross your arms. Okay, now cross it the other way. Okay? The other way feels real uncomfortable to you. Okay? Just as different training programs will. Maybe the training program that we're going to present today is going to feel real uncomfortable to you. But if you sit there long enough, that's going to feel more comfortable than the original way. Okay, but you're not going to like it at the beginning. You're going to fight it. You're going to say it sucks or whatever. The other is with only adding one line, how can we make that equal to six? I'm not going to make you guys bust your brain for too long here, okay? It's kind of thinking outside the box, okay? So sometimes the answers are more obvious than what you think. Okay. I spoke a little bit about the um, Western method of periodization. What that is, how many of you read Powerlifting USA? Okay, so everybody's familiar with like the workout of the month and all the examples that are in there. Okay, what I'm going to do is the next slide is going to bring up a sample of that. I'm sure most of you have done a workout such as that before. Okay, and I would say about nine out of ten times, say if you're training for a bench meet, that's how you end up. Okay, you end up smashed on the bench. How many of you put together programs like this for yourself? Pull out the calculator, you calculate it out, run it through, spent years doing it. We're going to show some of the advantages and disadvantages of this, of this style of training. First off, to give you a little breakdown on what's going on here, you have this first three weeks that I put here, which would be classified a hypertrophy phase. The goal of that phase is to try to build mass, try to build muscle, okay? That would be followed by a basic strength phase where the, um, I think that's actually backwards a little bit, where the, um, you're getting into fives, then you're going to go into a power phase, and then a peak phase, okay? That's just a sample of one I'm going to pick out there. I said there's, <coughs> it's a little backwards here, these should be reversed, I'll have to change that. But anyhow, a lot of things, in theory, what's supposed to happen here is you're going to build muscle mass. You're going to take that muscle mass, you're going to put strength on top of it. Then you're going to take that strength you have and you're going to build power with it. Then after you build the power with it, you're going to peak for a meet. Problem is it doesn't work. Okay, some of the shortcomings from doing this style of training that everybody runs into. First off, It's a percentage-based program, okay? Meaning, if you squat 500 pounds, week one is, we'll say 50%, 250 pounds. What do you normally do after you go to a meet? Take a couple weeks off, rest. With this style of training, they usually advocate take a month off, do some bodybuilding work, just kind of rest your joints. Then, you got another meet, it might be uh, 16 weeks away. So you got four weeks to kill, so you're going to screw around for another four weeks. The point is, can you squat 500 pounds after going through resting and so forth? There's absolutely no way you can squat 500 pounds. Okay, you're also going to learn there's a difference between your competitive max and your gym max. For most people, you're going to lift more in a meet than you're going to lift in the gym. Okay, that's how it should be. All right, so aside from that, you're going to be basing it on a lift that's not actual, okay? Which may not be a problem, but say you can only squat 450 pounds after taking that time off, which is very reasonable. Okay, I know I can take a 900-pound squatter in our gym during what we would classify an off-season, which we say we don't have one. Year-round, we try to maintain the strength at about 10% or at about 90% of where we were, so a 10% decrease. 
So a 900 pound squatter, that's 90 pounds off that squat. Okay, there's a big difference. All right. And with the problem with this program is you're going into it with a 500 pound squat, but here's another problem with it. Nobody ever does that. Because they figure, man, I did 500. I know I could have done 520. So I want to do 520, so I'm going to base this on 520, which throws it up even more. So instead of being 53%, it's 63%. Everybody following me there? Okay. As you come down through here, what happens at 90%, you're really 100%.